Hey guys, welcome back to the Web3 intro course playlist. In the previous video, we talked about the different layers of the metaverse, and then we understood that there's a decentralization layer where, where all the computing is happening. And this is where developers like us can contribute a lot because this is where new blockchain solutions uh, are being created. Now, in this video, in today's video, I wanna talk about the blockchain architecture itself. So there are multiple layers in a blockchain architecture. There are the application presentation layer, which a lot of us, uh, you know, whenever you see these projects on YouTube, build a, a Twitter, uh, Web3 Twitter or Spotify, uh, the, you know, Web3 Spotify or Web3 Facebook, all of that's happening on the application and present layer, presentation layer, which are basically your dApps, decentralized applications, right? But there's so much more. Uh, that's happening as in a lot of innovation is also happening at the lower level layers as well okay so you don't want to just be looking at companies that are building the dapps because these are actually uh, not very complex to build and all of the companies that are building their own blockchains they want you to just build the dapps so that you get uh, you you know you work with those blockchains and you use those blockchains to build your dapps but the real innovation and the real crux um, and, the, and the real money to be made actually if you want uh, you know the truth the real money to be made is out here okay and building the actual blockchain not just at the presentation and application layer uh, because then you know you have like a solid technology which is very difficult to replicate and you know very difficult to compete with dApps anybody can compete with you but when you have uh, when you have your own blockchain very difficult to compete okay so like I said most of the apps are being created here at the presentation layer but uh, let's say you were to create your own blockchain. Now you don't you don't have to write things from scratch anymore. There are many projects on GitHub. So what you do is you, you pick up a project from GitHub, okay, and you change any of these uh, configurations. You change how the consensus is taking place. You change any of these things, right? And then you can essentially create your own blockchain solution, which has a little bit of differences from any other blockchain solution. So you don't have to build things from scratch. Pick up a project in Rust, Colang, something like that change these things. And then there are technologies like Hyperledger, which help you do that in a much better way, right? You can do that as well. So um, with with the help of this, right, with now that you've understood that blockchain itself has multiple layers, and there are many companies working at different layers of the blockchain, I want to take you through, uh, quickly, I want to take you through this entire ecosystem. So these are my most favorite companies, in, which are in, in every single sphere of uh, blockchain or Web3. There are so many more companies, I have not listed them, and there are so many more categories, but these are the main categories that I wanted to show you. And each of these projects, we'll explore them uh, in more details. Uh, when, you know, the first 30 videos, I wanna just focus on getting the concepts across to you. And then after that, 31st video onwards, I wanna start digging down deeper into uh, each of these companies and what they're doing so that you have more uh, information about what they're doing. So for that, we'll be going through their white papers, we'll be understanding what they're doing and how they're probably changing the world. Now, uh, the most important ones are the blockchains themselves. So somebody who's building their own blockchain, like I said, is is quite solid. It's, it's, a, it's a great thing to be doing, right? So there's Near, there's Solana, Tezos, Ethereum. These are four of my most favorite ones and the ones uh, that uh, you know didn't make it here, like you know, XDC and uh, Bitcoin, they're, they're also my favorite blockchains, but these are these four are in, in my uh, you know experience or in my from my perspective, these four are really really important because they help you build a lot of stuff very easily. Uh, the documentation is awesome, the technologies are awesome. Uh, these two are built in Rust, which I really especially like. Okay, and then you have companies like Threefold, they're trying to decentralize the internet. Then you have decentralized processing. So Golem, if you if you follow me on LinkedIn or if you are connected with me on LinkedIn, you might be knowing that you know I keep talking about these companies quite a bit. So in, if you haven't added me, might want to add me if you want to keep getting updates. So Golem is um, if you want to know my most favorite technology out here, it's easily Golem. What they're doing is they're uh, they're building a technology where all of the processes across the internet can be connected and somebody who wants to use uh, processing resources, he doesn't now have to just create one server on the internet. He can have complete decentralized processing, right? So uh, imagine somebody sitting in China, somebody in Russia, somebody in India, and everybody has some processing power, leftover processing power on their computers that they're not using right now. And somebody else sitting in the US can easily deploy an application uh, which can use the processing power from all of these different places. So it's just how BitTorrent used to be there. BitTorrent was for sharing files P2P. Now this is sharing processing power through the entire network. So it's insane what they're doing. 
um, I think they're again they're also building in Rust. Check, right? Yeah, pretty sure they're building in Rust. Check them out. Then you have super nodes like Alchemy, which help you build products uh, and deploy products on multiple different blockchains. Pretty awesome. Then you have sidechain and scaling. So Polygon, what they're saying is that uh, Ethereum is slow. Ethereum is, uh, has a lot of transactions happening, but but it's slow, so it's a problem. So uh, why don't we build a sidechain which help you scale uh, your applications on Ethereum? So they will be deploying on Ethereum, but they will basically uh, use something called as a sidechain, uh, which helps them you know, uh, process things faster. Now, you don't have to worry about this too much because I will be covering everything about sidechains in a while. So that's why I'm not sharing too much information. Don't want to confuse you. Uh, then you have oracles. Oracles help you to transfer data between different blockchains and from the outside world to the blockchain. Again, I won't explain too much because I don't want you to get confused, but we'll dig deep into oracles uh, in, in this series itself. Um, so Chainlink is an oracle. Uh, it's a really solid company. So all of these that I've to told you about till now, they're all really solid companies. So you don't have to be just building a blockchain. Could be building solutions that help blockchains work better. So Chainlink helps to interact between different blockchains. It helps you to create bridges between blockchains. And you can have side chains which help you to scale a particular blockchain easily. So what I'm saying is that even though they don't seem like they're building their own blockchains, but they're building solutions that help other blockchains. So again, really solid companies, right? These guys, really solid companies. Then you have developer tools. Now, it's okay to build a blockchain, but how do you get developers using uh, in tools like Ethereum. You, you have tools like Truffle, Ganache, Hard Hat, which make it very easy for us to build products for Ethereum. Uh, so again, very, very valu valuable companies. Then you have DeFi protocols, Aave, everybody knows about it. Uh, what's more interesting from developer standpoint is are the storage solutions like IPFS. So if you're building a blockchain, if you're building a blockchain solution, you might be storing information on a decentralized uh, network like IPFS. IPFS is like BitTorrent, but a little more advanced. You can have decentralization of the files. So your files are divided into chunks and they're stored across multiple uh, servers, or multiple like people's laptops, actually, people's computers. Uh, same with Pinata. Pinata helps with IPFS. Infura helps with IPFS as well. Then you have NFT. Now, Infura is now having like more solutions. Pinata, same as well, but that's what they started out as, and that's what I'm talking about. And NFT dev. Uh, so you can, if you want to develop uh, you know, products around NFTs, Morales is a great platform. Morales is now, they have introduced more things. You can do more, not just NFT, but this is what they started with. Okay. Then you have your DEXs. DEXs are decentralized exchanges. Uh, if, you, if you notice here, I've not talked about tools like Binance and FTX and all those exchanges because they're centralized exchanges. Um, in my opinion, they were not supposed to exist. You always should have had DEXs, which are decentralized exchanges, in the sense uh, people can transact and swap tokens between them. They shouldn't have to go to a centralized place to buy these tokens. Uh, that's at least my worldview. Um, and these three companies, again, are really um, they're really valuable because this technology to build a DEX on your own is very difficult. It's extremely difficult. And I'm surprised uh, people can get these kind of engineers and they can build these kind of technologies. I'm surprised how they do it. Uh, because, uh, like, you know, if you under try and understand how automatic uh, market makers, AMMs, the technologies that they use, how they work, it's very difficult to build it, trust me. Um, so this is this is the quick overview of the ecosystem. They're all, like I said, blockchain companies. And these blockchain companies will be used, uh, you know, many of these games, uh, like, and the metaverse will be using many of these different types of blockchains. So like I said, all of these metaverse companies, all of them might be using different blockchains. Somebody could be using uh, Solana, somebody could be using the Near protocol, somebody could, could be using Tezos. Tezos, many games and metaverses are using Tezos now. So um, they could be using this different things, but all of these other companies which help you to work with blockchains are also going to be important because you can't just have blockchains in isolation. You need different type of tools to be able to interact with them or develop on top of them. So um, this was a quick overview. And like I said, after video number 30, we will dig down into each of these projects and we'll understand what they're doing even better, even in a more advanced way. But I hope you're liking it. I hope you're getting a lot of value. 
Uh, and everything is connected. So everything that we're covering right now is connected to each other. So like I said, you know, Metaverse is connected to blockchains, blockchains are connected to all of these companies that are coming around. And from an outsider's perspective, from somebody who doesn't have initiation about Web3, they would think that all of these companies are trying to do the same thing. And they're all trading their tokens. Like, you know, Polygon has their Matic token and Chainlink has their Link token. So from a very uh, shallow perspective, people who trade these tokens uh, on, on uh, you know, on let's say these uh, centralized crypto exchanges, they don't have, I, I feel from, from the people I've interacted, they don't have the knowledge of exactly what's happening inside these companies and why they're so valuable and why they're going to be valuable in the future. So um, from, from an engineering perspective, you know, um, it, it's for us, to under, we have to understand how these work from the inside so that we know which one is going to help us or not going to help us. And it's not just about trading tokens, right? So from an insider's perspective, if you have uh, if you have knowledge about this, you know that these companies are very different. They're not just all Web3 token companies just trying to trade token, right? They all have a very different utility, and that's what's going to define their value, uh, and not just the markets, what's happening on the crypto exchanges. All right, so thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Uh, I'll continue this series, and there's so much more information here, so much more knowledge, um, which, uh, you know, in this kind of a, this kind of an ordered, structured way might be difficult to find on the internet right now. Web3 is still very early. So do subscribe if you haven't already and you know watch this series properly and stay tuned with me. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.